Hey everyone, Dr. Mungli here. So in this video, I will be explaining you about polyol pathway. Now what is this polyol pathway? Now the most common monosaccharide that we have in our body is glucose. Now the glucose as you all know that it is going to undergo its major metabolic fate and that is glycolysis. The glucose can be broken down into pyruvate and pyruvate in the cells which contains mitochondria and sufficient oxygen. So it will go into uh, acetyl CoA formation and which eventually can be getting into TCA cycle or acetyl CoA by converting into citrate it will go into fatty acid synthesis. That is one of the fate of glucose in our cells. Now. Whenever glucose concentration is uh, elevated in the blood and getting into cells at high concentration, when the cells have got plenty of glucose, what they are going to go, uh, do with that glucose, apart from pushing that glucose into glycolysis or making glycogen or fatty acid synthesis, other than that, what is the other fate of glucose in our body, especially when it is at high concentration? So this kind of issues we can see under uh, well-fed conditions or in uh, disease conditions like uh, type 2 diabetes mellitus or type 1 diabetes mellitus. So in, uh, especially under type 2 and type 1 diabetes mellitus where there is uncontrolled blood glucose which is present. So during that time especially the tissues which are insulin independent tissues like uh, some of the examples for insulin independent tissues for the uptake of glucose is uh, neurons like Schwann cells of the neurons, peripheral uh, nerves or it may be liver, it may be kidney, it may be red blood cell, it may be uh, retina, it may be renal tubular cells or placenta. There are plenty of cells in our body which are insulin independent. Only three tissues in our body which are insulin dependent to take up glucose and those are skeletal muscle, adipose tissue and uh, cardiac tissue. Other than these three uh, tissues which are uh, which need insulin to express GLUT4 transporters on the membrane, other than these three tissues, all the other tissues uh, basically they are all insulin independent in uptake of glucose inside because they are glucose transporters, they don't need insulin uh, to be present over the membrane so they are always expressed over the membrane. Now all these insulin independent cells what they do, they are going to allow more and more glucose into the cells and uh, one of the fate of that excess glucose as I was saying before is to go into a pathway called polyol pathway. Now what exactly is the polyol pathway? In order to understand this we got to have a little bit idea about the structure of glucose and what exactly the change that is going on here. So I have written a structure of glucose here. So glucose is an aldose sugar so it has got aldehyde group in its first carbon and that's the functional carbon in a glucose and as you can see all the other carbons have got hydroxyl groups. So only the group that is changed here is the aldehyde group that's the glucose. So when the glucose is at high concentration especially when glucose is more in the cells especially the insulin independent uh, cells so those so, so there is an enzyme in all of our tissues whether it is an insulin dependent tissue or insulin independent tissue there is an enzyme called aldose reductase enzyme. Now this aldose reductase enzyme what it does it is going to convert aldehyde group in a carbohydrate in a monosaccharide into alcohol group as you can see this this is an aldehyde group here aldehyde group is basically reduced into alcohol group that is CH2OH that's the function of aldose reductase only thing is the KM of aldose reductase is high for glucose that means it has got a lower affinity for glucose so that means the aldose reductase will be active only when there is plenty of glucose available within the cell and that can be seen in uh, type 2 diabetes mellitus or type 2 diabetes mellitus or it can be seen uh, under well fed conditions especially if you take a carbohydrate rich meal so there can be increased activity of aldose reductase because the KM for aldose reductase for glucose is high that means it has got uh, lower affinity for glucose. That means it is active only when there is 
high blood glucose concentrate means high glucose is present in the cell. Now, what exactly aldose reductase does? It is going to reduce aldehyde group into alcohol group and for that, a reducing molecule that it uses is uh, NADPH plus H plus. So, NADPH plus H plus converted into NADP plus that is oxidation while the NADPH is oxidized, your glucose is reduced into sorbitol. Okay. Now, under the uh, when we have plenty of glucose inside the cell, especially when we have more blood glucose out there, so this plenty of glucose, one of the fate of this glucose, excess glucose, especially the glucose 6 phosphate, is to go into pentose phosphate pathway. And in pentose phosphate pathway, one of the product of pentose phosphate pathway is NADPH plus H plus. So under uh, conditions of high glucose in the cell, you will have plenty of NADPH plus H plus and you have more glucose and you are activating aldose reductase enzyme and thereby uh, sorbitol is synthesized. So it's all about aldose reductase activity. Higher the activity of aldose reductase, higher the sorbitol formation. Now why this sorbitol is so important? Why we are talking about sorbitol? It has all alcohol group here. Carbon 1 alcohol, carbon 2, carbon 3 as alcohol group. Carbon 4 as alcohol, carbon 5 alcohol, carbon 6 also has got alcohol group. That is why sorbitol is a polyol because all the carbons have got alcohol. So what is the importance of sorbitol here? Sorbitol compared to other monosaccharides. See, glucose is a monosaccharide. You have fructose there. You have galactose. These are all monosaccharides. So monosaccharides as such, they are osmotically active compound. But if you compare the osmotic activity of sorbitol compared to any other monosaccharide, sorbitol has got higher osmotic activity. Now, what will happen? When more and more glucose is converted to sorbitol under high glucose concentration, so this sorbitol can build up in the cell. Why that happens? Because it, as you can see, sorbitol furthermore, it can be converted into fructose, basically, Second carbon alcohol group can be converted to keto group there. So second carbon alcohol group in the sorbitol. So it can be converted into keto group. Okay, that job it will be done by sorbitol dehydrogenase enzyme. It is going to oxidize alcohol into keto group where NAD plus is reduced into NADH plus H plus. So the job is done by sorbitol dehydrogenase enzyme. Now, see this is how sorbitol can be converted to fructose, but there is a catch here. What is the catch? So the thing is, all of our tissues, may majority of our tissues, which are whether they are insulin dependent or insulin independent tissues, especially insulin independent tissues, they all express high quantities of aldose reductase enzyme so high levels of aldose reductase enzyme is already available, but the expression of sorbitol dehydrogenase in these tissues that it will be very very less. So most of the tissues they express less quantities of sorbitol dehydrogenase. There is only three except means uh, oh, the exception here is only three tissues, especially the liver, liver, ovaries, seminolocytes. They will express high quantities of sorbitol dehydrogenase. Other than these three tissues, liver, ovaries, and seminal vesicles. So, other than these three tissues, all the other tissues they have got low expression of sorbitol dehydrogenase. So, what that means? So, the sorbitol once it is made in all the tissues, especially insulin independent tissues. So, this sorbitol is not entirely converted into fructose. Uh, in the tissues other than liver, ovaries and seminal vesicles because they have less expression of sorbitol dehydrogenase. So only three tissues can convert sorbitol into fructose sufficiently that is over liver, ovary and seminal vesicle. All the other tissues whenever sorbitol is made in their cells so sufficient conversion of sorbitol doesn't go on into fructose. So because of this what happens? So when we have more glucose in the blood, more glucose gets into our cells, especially in the insulin independent cells and these cells will make more and more sorbitol, but that sorbitol is not sufficiently converted into fructose because they have low expression of sorbitol dehydrogenase. So they have a high expression of aldose reductase converting more and more glucose into sorbitol, but they have a low expression of sorbitol dehydrogenase. So overall what happens is there will be build up of sorbitol. So this sorbitol will build up in the cells, especially in the insulin independent cell cells. So this, this sorbitol as I said uh, before, that is an osmotically active molecule. 
So sorbitol is an osmotically active molecule compared to uh, any other monosaccharide. So osmotically active and uh, there osmosis is going on. It means uh, sorbitol is going to imbibe water into the cell. So water will start moving into the cell. So when the water moves into the cell because of the osmotic effect of sorbitol, so what will happen? So the cell will swell because it's an osmosis. Osmotic effect is going on, cell will swell and overall function of the cell will be affected. So especially the cells like uh, 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 lens. So the lens cells which will have more sorbitol, so the opacity, so there will be transparency of the lens will decrease giving rise to opacity. So that is why uh, patients, diabetes patients, uh, uncontrolled uh, type 2 diabetes or type 1 diabetes patients, because of the continuous accumulation of sorbitol, they can have a premature cataract formation. So early cataract formation. Why? Because sorbitol is going to imbibe water and it will change the transparency of the lens. So lens will tend to become opaque and opaqueness of the lens that is what we refer it as cataract. So bilateral cataract that you see in diabetes mellitus, it is partly because there is more and more sorbitol that is formed. And some other complications related with uh, diabetes mellitus, uncontrolled diabetes mellitus, it can be polyneuropathy. Now the polyneuropathy, peripheral neuritis, all this because the neurons which takes more and more glucose in an insulin independent way, they will tend to accumulate sorbitol, especially when glucose is not under control. So sorbitol building up within the neurons can affect the neuronal metabolism and giving rise to polyneuropathy or peripheral uh, neuritis. And this can happen in the kidney, renal tubular cells, which will take up more and more glucose. And whenever there is more glucose available, and the glucose is converted into sorbitol by aldose reductase, and that can affect kidney function, giving rise right to nephropathy that is seen in diabetes mellitus. It can, it can happen in uh, retina, like retina taking more glucose, converting into sorbitol, sorbitol building up and affecting the function of retina, giving rise right to retinopathy. So some of these complications which are like microvascular complications seen in type 2, uh, sorry, uncontrolled diabetes, it can be because, partly because of polyol pathway that is accumulation of sorbitol in the cell, giving rise to bilateral cataract that is then giving rise to diabetic uh, neuro, uh, uh, peripheral neuropathy, uh, diabetic nephropathy or diabetic retinopathy and all kinds of uh, microvascular complications that you see in uncontrolled diabetes mellitus can be partly explained by sor sorbitol. There are so many other uh, uh, hypotheses to explain microvascular complications seen in diabetes mellitus but one of the hypotheses in that is accumulation of sorbitol uh, because of excess glucose, excess activity of aldose reductase and low activity of sorbitol dehydrogenase in the tissues. So this is what is all about uh, polyol pathway explaining why do we see microvascular complications in uh, patients having uncontrolled glucose. I hope this video has helped you in understanding the concept. So if you have not subscribed to this channel, so consider subscribing because I'll be making uh, videos often and almost every day or alternate day. I'll be uploading videos on uh, biochemistry concept. And also if you like the video, so give thumbs up. If you have any questions, so make sure to put that question in the comment section below. So I'll try to answer it as soon as uh, possible whenever I get time. And uh, see you in my next video.